Hi, and welcome to the Meriwether Knitting Podcast. My name is Gabriella, and I'm coming to you from my home in Germany, where I'm so excited to chat with you today about all that I've been knitting and crafting and making this week. If you're a new viewer, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are a returning viewer, I'm so happy that you have decided to come back and join me for more knitting and crafting chat. This week, I have not made a ton of progress on many pro projects, but I've done a lot on one project and I have quite a bit to talk to you about and share with you. So stay tuned. I'm excited about that. Right now, there is a knit along that is running, that's running through the whole entire year of 2021 that I'm hosting along with my fellow podcasters, Bella of 100 Acre Wool and Sophie of the Becca Creations Knitting Podcast. It's a Tudor Roses knit along where we're knitting patterns from the book to the Tudor Roses by Alice Starmore. It's an iconic book filled with stunning, beautiful patterns for garments and um, also accessories. There's also an accessory there too. It's like a shawl, a wrap. It's such a, such a beautiful book. And I'm really excited to get started on my project. This is a knit along that's running the whole year. Works in progress are allowed. Um, you can join in any point and chat with us about it, either on Instagram under the hashtag hashtag Tudor Rose Cal, or on Ravelry in any of our groups or all of our groups. I have a Ravelry group, that's the Meriwether Knitting Ravelry group. Bella and Sophie also have their own Ravelry groups with threads dedicated to the knit along. So if you're interested, I hope you join us and chat about that. Um, so this week I have, I wanted to show you before I started, the finished birthday crown I made for my daughter Esmeralda. Um, I showed this on previous episodes. This was the very first needle felted project I ever did, I ever attempted. I had never done any needle felting before. And this is the first time I've ever done it and I really, really enjoyed it. It was such a fun experience and it turned out much better than I had expected, I guess. I, I mean, I don't know. It was just a lot more intuitive and just really, really relaxing. And I don't know, it was a lot different than I expected, but it was a lot of fun and I've shown it before, but I did finish it up and put the finishing touches on it. And so this is the completed crown. Yesterday was Esmeralda's birthday and we had a little celebration for her, a very small one, just with my parents-in-law and my sister-in-law who live close by. We had a little breakfast um, because my husband had to work during the day because it's a weekday. Um, we just kind of had a little breakfast party where she had some pancakes, had lots of strawberries and blueberries, which she ate. She much preferred the strawberries and the blueberries to the pancakes. We sang to her and she had so much fun and she wore this crown and incredibly, she did not take it off. She wore it for hours. At some point, because I hadn't tied it very tightly, it started to slip a little bit down and I just took it off, but she, was, she wore it for hours and I'm so happy about that because I kind of expected if you have babies or you are you know anything about babies, they often don't like having things on their head, especially things that they're not used to. So they just pull them off right away. And she didn't do that. She really liked wearing it. So that was so much fun. It was so cute to see her wearing it too. She just had this little like crown on her head. It was so cute. So I have, I think I showed you already all the felting that I had done here, um, all the felting that I had completed. It's just a little spring scene with a bunny. The bunny I kept, this is the first one I had done. I had mentioned that I was maybe going to do another one without the bunny and just a different kind of theme, but I didn't end up doing it. My husband really liked this one and I was actually really happy with it. And I had started another one, which if I complete it, maybe I'll share it with you too. But um, I just went with this. I was a little bit nervous that the bunny would be too Easter bunny vibes, you know, because I didn't want the Easter bunny on her birthday crown. And so, but... I heard from others that it wasn't going to be very obvious, like it was just, yeah, it's just a bunny, it's just spring, but then a loving family member said, oh, the Easter bunny's on her crown, and I was like a little disappointed. I was like, oh, yeah, it did look like the Easter bunny, but it's no big deal. It's still just spring. It doesn't make a difference. But I think it's a very, it was very cute and very fun and just lovely to have a beautiful little crown for her. Very spring themed, very fun. There are little bumblebees and a little butterfly, which the butterfly, I'm not the happiest with the way the butterfly turned out, but it's still cute. Um, little flowers of all sorts. I've started another one with different flower types on it. I'm thinking it would be really fun to make like a crown for each season so that you can kind of switch out the crowns for each season, like in her little dress up basket. And one for autumn, one for winter, 
one for spring and one for summer. I think that might be fun, but we'll see. Yeah, it was lovely. And so the way I finished it up was I did a blanket stitch all around the edge um, just to kind of finish it off. I put another identical sheet of felt on the back and so that it would be too double and it's a little bit more sturdy, which I'm happy I did that. It looks good. And then I did the blanket stitch around the edge and I will put the tutorial that I used below in the show notes, but I think it turned out really well. I really like the way the blanket stitch looks. It's really nice. And it's also, um, I've never done blanket stitch before. I mean, it's definitely not perfect as you can see, but as you know from my other projects, if you've watched my videos before, I'm not a perfectionist. I like to make things myself and I like that they look handmade. So I don't have a problem with a little bit of unevenness or a little bit of kind of the handmade charm I like, um, but I think it looks good and I'm happy. The awkward parts were here around the ribbon. That was where it got awkward because I, thinking it would reinforce the ribbon being sturdy, I used some super glue on it because my husband had just bought super glue when it was like laying on the table. So I was just like, oh, I'll just super glue a little tiny bit on the ribbon on the inside, then it'll be really strongly attached, which I mean, it would be totally strongly attached with just sewing it. I don't know why I did that. I guess it was a big mistake because in the end you can see it kind of came through and that does not look very beautiful. But this is my first crown I've ever made so I'm very happy with it. I'm not mad about that at all. It was just a special birthday crown and I did an E for Esmeralda, although this little is terribly embroidered, very terribly. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna keep it far away. <laughs> but you can see it just, I just did it because I needed to close it off and I thought it, instead of doing anything I was just like oh I brought the um, thread in here and just kind of embroidered that and then brought the thread through and it's like it's just left there kind of loose in the inside kept it very sturdy and stable so yeah that's the birthday crown um i'm very happy with how it turned out and i'm excited to make more in the future and it was just it was a really fun project if you've never done needle felting and something like that interests you i know people also do like wool paintings or something i think they're called where they felt like beautiful pictures and I think this is so beautiful. I don't know if it's necessarily my next thing or my next hobby. I do like very practical, usable kind of crafts and arts, but it is something that's fun and that looks really cool. So if you like the way that looks, mine is very amateur, so there are better things to find online or in books, but um, you might want to try it. You might want to try needle felting. It's a lot of fun. So um, the next thing that I want to share with you is I'm going to show you only two works in progress this week because this last week, unfortunately, I made zero progress, not a single stitch, I think, or maybe I finished one row, but I didn't do much at all on my clover pullover, which is a beautiful pattern that I'm knitting right now um, by Marie Wallen. Um, but I haven't made a single progress, single stitch progress on that. And yeah, after all my talk about slow knitting and slow living, I just totally lived it out last week and didn't a single stitch on it but I'm so excited about that project still still in love with it still excited about it but I just didn't make progress on it this last week because I've been working a lot on my so faded pullover which I will show you first and I finished the body as I hoped I had hoped I would I think in preparation for Esme's birthday we kind of didn't I just didn't have I don't know I didn't do that much knitting this last week I would say although showing you my progress here I feel very satisfied with the with the knitting I did do I actually almost finished the body. I'm like three quarters of the way finished with casting off, but I ended up switching and fading and switching into this little final mini skein because I was afraid that I wouldn't have enough of a solid color. I thought I would just go solid and I think it would have looked better if I had gone solid, I think. I think it would have looked a little bit more cohesive and yeah, but in the end I decided to fade into this mini because I was afraid that it wouldn't have enough of this color for the arms and I don't want the arms to be too short. I do want them to go like to the elbow. So yeah, I switched, I faded and I used this mini skein, which actually in the end, it also doesn't look bad. It looks kind of cool. It's still like a little wild. It's way more, yeah, bold and a higher contrast kind of color than these colors at the top. But I like a little funkiness in this project. I think that's what it's for. I also think this is my Anne of Green Gables themed so faded if you are new these skeins are or this skein specifically was inspired this colorway was inspired by Anne of Green Gables it's by the hand dyer and indie dyer a homespun house um 
and I really, really love Anne of Green Gables. It's my favorite childhood book, one of my favorite books ever. And so this is my Anne of Green Gables pullover. And I feel like Anne and Anne of Green Gables was also like an adventurous spirit. She was fun and wild and free. And so I feel like it kind of works to have a little splash of crazy color at the bottom. But I knit these, this pullover completely in the suggested needle sizes. I didn't even check my gauge, actually, not even one time. But in this project, I mean, I've learned the hard way that you need to check your gauge. I need to check my gauge when I'm knitting pullovers or anything that is going to be worn like a garment. I mean, obviously with shawls, you don't need to do that as much, but I'm going to be knitting pullovers or sweaters. I definitely need to do that because a few months ago I had this huge, yeah, crazy project that I had knit a whole entire sweater for my husband and the gauge was completely off and I just hadn't properly checked it. I kind of checked it as I knit and so I, yeah, I, I made a big mistake that way and I learned the hard way you need to check your gauge, but with this project I didn't do it. <laughs> I like decided I'm going to try to risk that once more and I couldn't really felt this because it's super wash. So I don't know, that would also be my last sweater that I made that mistake on. I ended up felting or filling, um, I think is the word, when you shrink it and intentionally make it smaller by felting or filling. But I didn't do it with this because I just felt like the size I needed in, I needed in a size, I think it's 38 or something. I felt very fine. If there's a little bit more or a little bit less ease, I don't really mind. A little bit more positive, a little bit more negative. It's a little tighter or looser. I don't really mind. It's kind of something I don't have the biggest preference on. Um, it's just a fun piece. I'm going to be wearing it with jeans and high-waisted pants mostly because it's going to be a cropped version and I feel like it's pretty flexible. It's not one that I really definitely need it to fit a certain way. Like my clover or pullover that I'm knitting, that is one I definitely want to fit a certain way. And so that one knitting the swatch was extremely important also because it was a very complicated pattern and it takes so much time. So I did knit a swatch for that. I'm very happy I did. Um, but with this one, I feel like yeah, it's, I don't mind if it's kind of, it's kind of just like a fun, crazy piece. So I'm happy with it. And also seeing it, I can't wait till it's completely cast off, then I'll try it on. But it seems like it will fit me perfectly, perfectly well with maybe like a little tiny bit of ease, but no, it seems like it's great. So I am very happy with it. That is my So Faded, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, if you're not familiar. Um, yeah, it's a very, very, very popular pattern. So I'm sure you have heard of it if you've been on Ravelry at all. If not, you should definitely check it out. It's of course also linked in the show notes. Everything I mentioned, all the patterns I mentioned are linked in the show notes below. So here it is. Here is my So Faded. This is how much I have left of the tiny mini. It's a little bit like a little bit more than that because it's gotten unraveled, but this is how much I have. Um, I think it was 20 grams. I could be wrong but I think it was about 20 grams and this is as much as I have left. So I'm very happy with this. I'm going to be casting off and then I'll have a tiny bit left, which hopefully I'll have enough for a square or like half of a square on my little mitered square patchwork blanket, which I have also not worked on this week. After last week introducing it, I was like, I need to at least knit one square on this. Like, how can you introduce something? But it's definitely just, you know, it's a new project in my pile, even if I haven't worked on it yet. You know, scrappy projects and blankets tend to be, in my mind, often um, long-term projects. So it's okay that I didn't get a square done, but hopefully this week I will. Um, we'll see. This week I feel like I have quite a bit on my knitting to-do list. I would love to finish this this week. We will see if I will. At least finish one sleeve, one and a half. I would be so happy to just have this finished, to be able to wear it. The weather has changed. It's been so nice and it's been a little rainy and a little like, you know, it's not been warm by any means, but it's definitely been more springy and I just think it would be perfect for this sweater. Even if not yet to wear outside, just to layer or to wear inside. It's like cute, cozy little spring. It feels very spring to me, this so faded pullover. Yeah, as I said, my goal for this next week is to knit at least one sleeve, hopefully both. Um, maybe even the neckline, the neck collar. Who knows? What if I finish this this week? I would be so happy, but I also don't expect that. But tonight, a friend is coming over. If she's watching, hi Martina. She recently just started knitting and it's been so much fun to have her knit with me because I think I have no 
friend to knit. We have been having knit nights. We always, every couple of weeks, we sit and watch a show together. Lately, we've actually been watching The Tudors, which is very appropriate, fitting with the Tudor Roses knit along, but it's a lot of fun to sit and I knit for a couple of hours with her and now she's joining me in knitting. So it's really, really special to have a friend who knits something very special. The next work in progress I have to show you, I have not made a ton of progress on, but I have made some progress on and I really loved knitting it and I'm just gonna share it with you because it's, it's, move, it's moving a little bit slowly. But that's because I was working mostly on this. And like I said, I think just in preparation for Esme's birthday, the first birthday is like a big deal. I don't know why, it's also like not like we could have a big party, but I was just thinking about it and, and I guess I was just occupied. But I've been working on this sock a little bit and I need to measure it and see how much more I need to do because this is for someone very special to me who I'm hoping I will be able to see very soon. I don't, I'm not gonna have these socks finished by then I think, but um, this is, but I, I need to measure the foot to see how long I need to knit it. But this is the Cornish Cream Tea Sock Pattern by Helen Stewart um, of Curious Handmade. It's a beautiful, beautiful, stunning lace sock pattern. You can see this is the lace panel. It's just stuck a net around the back. Here it looks a little bit distorted right now. But it's stuck a net around the back and um, I knit this a little bit tighter. Didn't know it would turn out that tight, but I had accidentally knit this, the heel flap in size zero needles, or I think that's two millimeter needles, rather than size one or 2.25 millimeter needles, as I've been knitting the body or the cuff and the foot of the sock. I'm hoping it won't make a big deal, and I'm going to make a big difference. I'm definitely going to be blocking these um, before I gift them, because, I mean, I don't really block my socks ever, but because I feel like they block to your foot when you wear them. You know, I don't know if that's true or not, but if they're my socks, I mean, when I knit Nick's socks too, his socks just molded to his feet after he wore them. And I feel like the same is true for mine. I feel like they block to your feet, but that's, I don't know if that's true or not, but for a gift, I will block these for sure that, so that they look nice and beautiful. And it's also because they're lace, it'll be nice to kind of let that lace shine through a little blocking. But yeah, it's a little bit tight at the heel, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, but it's just a really, really lovely pattern. It's beautiful. It's such fu a fun knit. It's so fun to just knit a little repeat one after the other. And I try to get one in a day. I, the past couple days I haven't done it, but most of the days, most days I do. It's also a nice way to get progress on a project, like slow and steady, because I would say a little repeat, it doesn't take very long at all. Um, and I mean, if you just did one a day, I mean, it would take a couple months and then you'd have a pair of socks for just a little bit of work and a beautiful pair of socks. This is something just so special. Less, like I had mentioned previously, I think this might be the first like lace or cabled sock project I've ever done. I'm not quite sure, but I think it might be. I may have done textured socks, but I've done color work socks before. Don't know about this though, lace or cabled, and it's a lot of fun and it's so beautiful. And I definitely want to knit another pair. I already have some yarn that I want to knit another pair with. Um, I'm not sure if it will be also the same exact pattern, but I love Helen Stewart's patterns and I'm so inspired by them. And also just, I've been looking at lots of different stunning lace and cable patterns. And it's just so exciting because as I had mentioned in the last episode, each and every single row is explained to you, is written out for you. So if you've never knit cables or lace, or socks before, this would be the perfect project for you. You could start your first pair of socks and have it be something as beautiful as this because she explains it so well. The pattern is so well written. It's like a spreadsheet. You can mark off which rows you've done. It's so incredible. It's really, I was, I was amazed at the thoroughness and professionality and like, I don't know, just the, the incredibly perfectly written pattern. Um, but I am also, she has also in the pattern a chart, just a simple chart for you as well for the lace sections. And um, because I've knit socks quite often, I just use the little chart. I just print out the chart and I've just been knitting from the chart rather than the long instructions. But for either, if you've had a lot of experience knitting socks and lace, or if you are brand new, the pattern is perfect for you because it has something for everyone. It's just, I love it. I was, I was amazed by her pattern. And I, um, 
definitely want to knit another pattern by her again. So I was very, very excited about it. And so this is the Cornish Cream Tea Socks. Sock, first sock. <laughs> Otherwise, these are them. Yeah, there it is. They're so beautiful. So ladylike. They just make me think of like a beautiful, I said this last time, like some kind of Victorian lady. Um, I don't know. They're just very very elegant and sweet and feminine. So I'm knitting these in the uh, Regia Premium Cashmere Yarn, or Regia if you're German, um, in the shade Pink Parfait. I found out that the colorway does have a name. I looked up, I had ordered this yarn online a while ago, and I found out that it has a name, and the name is Pink Parfait, which I think is like such a delicious name. And I mean like Cornish cream tea, cream tea socks, if you know, I can't even say it, but Cornish cream tea socks in the pink parfait colorway. Are you kidding me? Could you get any more delicious? Like what a delicious name. I don't know what it is, but I am somebody who just loves when names have food themes in them, especially something like pink parfait. Like that just sounds like, it just makes me like the colorway. I'm so driven by things like that. Like I'm easily, um, you know, caught by these kind of like marketing techniques. Just sounds delicious. I love it. Although I do have to say when I was pregnant in my first trimester and a half, if you've ever been pregnant, you probably know, like all of those things, like I've always been somebody who loved, like I loved strawberry shortcake as a kid because I just thought, like obviously strawberry shortcake is so cute and her whole world is so cute. But this idea of strawberry shortcake being her name, it just sounded delicious to me. And then when I was pregnant, I thought it was disgusting. I did not want to hear any mention of food ever because you have morning sickness or not everyone does, but I had a very bad morning sickness um, in my pregnancy. And like even hearing strawberry shortcake, I just, I couldn't take it. But anyway, I feel like it's maybe TMI, but I just, I really couldn't take it. Or like if I had read pink parfait, the word parfait, I wouldn't have been able to handle it, which is so interesting. It's just so interesting that like, Obviously now that makes me want it. it. Like I love it. And in my whole life I felt that way. But in that stage of my life, I couldn't, I couldn't even handle the word parfait. I couldn't handle anything. I couldn't even think about food. It's crazy. But anyway, <laughs> those are my works in progress. But before I, I chat with you a little bit, I want to show you what I am holding my socks in. I'm holding it into a very special project bag. And it's this little project bag which is a very cool project bag. This is how it looks. I don't know what this kind of bag is called, but it's like, I think it's a Japanese kind of bag or something, at least it's marketed that way. You kind of hold it like this and it's this cool wrap, this cool like triangular shape. And it's, it's really cool and I like this fabric and this is a very special bag to me because this was a gift from my mother-in-law. She sews and she sews beautiful things and she asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I very presumptuously requested a project bag and she showed me different patterns and I thought this was such a cool pattern. I just thought it looked so cool and I wanted something for my socks because I like to usually take my socks along with me and I don't really have a project bag and using like reusable shopping bags or putting it in my purse doesn't really work because even if I have like, I carry a backpack everywhere I go, a little backpack and a project fits in there, but it's like, when it's with everything else, it gets tangled and it's just not nice. So I asked for a little project bag and this was the perfect size and it looks so cool. It's just a really fun little bag and really special that she sewed it for me herself. She also has a shop on Etsy where she sells baby and children's clothes that she sews and she's an amazing um, seamstress, sewist. She's actually sewn almost all of Esmeralda's clothes, at least all her pants and a lot of her dresses. Mm, not her, like her onesies we, I've bought, but literally everything she's sewn and she's given us beautiful handmade clothes and really sweet, fun little leggings and pants and jackets and all kinds of things. And she has a shop where she also sells baby clothes. So if you're interested, you can check that out below. I'll put in the description box as well. I think she only ships to Germany, unfortunately, and maybe also in Europe, but you can definitely check that out. It's really, really a special, special thing. But yeah, that's a special project bag. And I, I definitely think in the future, I'd love to invest in a project bag or two because it's so nice to have this all contained, everything I need just in a bag. 
Um, I also like baskets and I have a basket by the place that I always sit and knit with a lot of my stuff in it and just different projects, but I don't know. And it's also nice to have a basket where you carry it around because it's kind of just easy to pick up and knit a row or two. I don't know, for projects that I take along with me, it's nice to, to carry it separate from, yeah, like I said, in my backpack or in another bag or, you know, somewhere where it can fall out. It's nice to have it closed. And this, although it's not a zip, it's not zipped or anything, I feel very secure with this because it's very, it's quite, quite tight. I mean, I pushed it down, but like, it's quite tight and quite closed at the top. It's like really cool. I don't know if these are called origami bags. I'm not quite sure, but um, these are even a little, a little pocket in there but I don't really need much for these socks. I'm knitting it on, knitting the sock on um, nine inch circular needles, which makes it very easy. Although I do, because of the little lace, I do need to use a couple of double points for a couple of stitches because they're kind of tough to do with the nine inch circulars, which I feel like these ones are from Chiaogu, but they're not very sharp on the tip. These are also Chiaogu needles and they're very, very sharp, these DPNs, double pointed needles, but yeah, I feel like I need another pair of needles to get those stitches, to knit those couple of lace stitches. But anyway, that's all I have to show you as far as works in progress go and knitting. Um, although I do have some special news to share with you, which is kind of personal news. And that is that in one week, or a week and a half actually, I think I'll have one more episode of the podcast here. But we are going to be flying to the United States, which I'm so excited about. It's the first time we're able to fly since last year. Um, as Meralda has her documents, the kind of rules have loosened a bit here as far as the lockdown. Things are a lot better here in Germany and also where we're flying to. This is the first time we're gonna be able to fly, which is going to be so special. So I'm gonna be flying with Esmeralda. Of course, I have to be tested first and the rules are very strict and everything is very strict, but we're gonna be very responsible. Be pretty isolated before we go so that you know, get the test, get there, and just be very careful about everything. But it is a direct flight, which makes me feel a lot safer about doing it. I'm really, really, really excited and thankful because this is going to be, as I've talked about before, um, Esmeralda has not met any of my side of the family. We couldn't come and we couldn't go to them for the whole entire year of her life. And she's now one, as I <laughs> told you before. So it's gonna be so special to be able to finally get to go there and make the journey, make the pilgrimage over um, to go and be with family there. So it's gonna be really fun. I'm definitely planning on still podcasting in the time that I'm there. If it's exactly every week, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna to try to do it every single week. I definitely have one more episode before I go, but I've been thinking a lot about what I'm gonna bring with me when I travel because I have not traveled in such a long time. And I've had issues before in airports bringing knitting supplies. Um, bringing needles and even if things are allowed I know some people don't know that and they just aren't happy with it even I, I remember at some point reading and printing out like something that said you know you can have knitting needles under I don't know four inches or something long and so I had brought my nine inch circular needles and just a sock and some dpns that were like wooden and they did not like my I mean, circular needles at all. They were unhappy about them. And so I'm really, really hesitant about bringing knitting on planes into airports because I do not want my needles to be taken from me. I really like them. <laughs> Just, I don't want them to be taken. So I do have a nine inch circular wooden needle, which I had bought after that experience. So I maybe will bring that. I maybe will bring, I'll bring my wooden DPNs, like my sock one. So maybe I'll have a sock project. And I've also ordered a pair of wooden like a wooden circular needle, a couple of them for a project that I'm planning on doing hopefully soon when I'm finished with my So Faded. I'm really hoping, I'm waiting on some yarn that I'm hoping will arrive before then. We'll see. Um, but I'm really excited about this trip. And I feel like also for some reason, knitting while traveling or while on a trip is something so special. It's like, I think it's because when you have the project, a finished object after you've traveled somewhere, it has an extremely strong, like, it carries those memories with it. It just carries the memories of those trips, the experience you had. And it's just a very special memory piece. It's like a souvenir of sorts of your time somewhere or in transit. And so I really am excited about that too. But yeah, that's what's coming up soon. 
project I have after my so faded is also a stock in it project a big one because I've been really enjoying pattern socks and my other projects of course a little bit more intricate as far as the pullover goes the clover, clover pullover so I'm planning on knitting a vest a stock in it vest um but I will share with you the details of that in the next episode. Hopefully I have the yarn by then. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week full of fun knitting and crafting and lots of relaxation in this beautiful spring season. I hope that it, there's some sun where you are and that you're able to enjoy it. I know if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's getting warmer. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's probably getting colder, but wherever you are, I hope that you're enjoying. If you enjoyed watching this episode, please leave me a like and subscribe. It would mean so much to me. And I'd love to hear in the comments below what you're working on and what you're up to this week. I'm so inspired as I hear what you're working on. I feel like through this podcast, I've added so many things to my Ravelry favorites queue. You can find me on Instagram as Meriwether Knitting. I post there and I love to see what you're working on there too. And you can find me on Ravelry as well as Gabriella K. I also have a Ravelry group, as I mentioned previously, called Meriwether Knitting. And I'd love if you joined me there and introduced yourself. So fun to hear from you and get to kind of be in conversation with you. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye.